I do hold some concerns about um, the loss of language and culture and the inability of our kids to get involved in it and learn about these special places and sites of significance around the area and we have an abundance of them so it is important that we um, or that I will be getting on the road along with our elders some more um, prominent elders and myself getting out there to promote our language and building up this pride in our culture. Uh, it's imperative we do that, otherwise these opportunities will be going with us to the grave and that's not a good thought and that's what parents and that's what elders' responsibility is, is to pass on the language and pass on the culture and transmit Manang culture and Manang culture down this way. And hopefully the kids will say, well, I want to learn more about that site, its significance. So we've got a lot to offer. It's a supermarket and we need to go through it and say to people, come shopping and help yourself to whatever you want and we'll, uh, you'll just pay in the joyousness of knowing that you've learned your language and your culture. So um, it's something we're proud of. We mapped out a plan verbally at this point in time that we'd leave Albany and go out to the Calgon, which we're hoping yep. to do this afternoon, oh, yeah. to that river crossing. Yep. And then once we get your mum's uh, involvement and, and um, Aidens, we'll be looking at getting through to Nyangrup and possibly the Stirlings and the, the Prongrups here, uh, and heading up to get Aiden and your mum's views on a place like Nyangrup. So there's like three spots is Albany, uh, the Stirlings, and Noangrup and their views on their journeys through that and what were their opinions in particular of their age group and what was their playground. One of my favourite places is the Upper Calgon which I consider to be the doorway to our, our region here because the entire Great Southern region has uh, arteries of rivers and crossings all the way from Walpole right across to, um, well, to the Calgon River there. And played here a lot as a child. We came here and played here, fished here, swam here. Uh, it's, a, it's a crossing site and on the opposite side to where we are now is a, a rocky crossing that Aboriginal people were coming down here to populate on the other side of this landmass would have had to cross here. It was the only place they could cross. So Is there any reason why they never <laughs> swam across the river? Well, they weren't the known side? and still aren't known as, uh, as swimmers um, or people that chop down trees to make artificial or man-made bridges across rivers and creeks. So they weren't known for that. Um, they just wanted to get across and set up camp and start to progress moving further further down. I don't think it's appreciated. We had a recent visit out there yesterday and there were no names that reflected that site in in a Noongar language way or an Aboriginal way for that matter. It mentioned Noongar, spelt correctly I might add, um, but there was no other reference there. Uh, and that is a place that does need, of all places, to be recognised. So place names for that, the place proper place name for that has to be something, and far more than just a, a, a small something painted on a post or something, it has to have more significance that, because it has, in my view, a very, very important place in our history down here. It was the start of everything. I think we should have dual naming. And I think we should have our Noongar names put into place, and the sooner the better. I believe they have a responsibility. They should have a mandate for that. You know, it wasn't the Noongars who destroyed the language and the culture, or the handing down of culture. 
I guess what we have to try and get through to um, agencies is that we don't want to rename. We actually want to dual name. So you can keep your name and we can have our name so that we both get what we want. They had their referendum and they said they're equal rights and they're equal in everything, I thought. So this is what we're just calling for. That's all we're asking for. Same. Don't go halfway and stop. Keep going. Name for Albany is Kinjarling, which means a place of rain. I, I, I think Albany is one of the best places I've ever lived. Beautiful beaches, but I never go away. I, never, I don't go away for holidays. I'm on holiday every day down here. For me, it, it's a place that identifies my people, where we, we come from, the Noongar people. Um, I'm a Minang person and um, the Minang is a tribe or a group that belongs to the wider um, Noongar community here in the great southern and western Australia. There's a lot to be said for Albany being the first settlement in the state. Uh, it's a very friendly place, has a reputation, an ancestral friendliness um, that's reflected in the statue in York Street. The Makari statue reflects how friendly my ancestors were from this area and that's a continuation. He was greatly valued as a leader and our area is renowned for its um, peacefulness uh, opposed to say somewhere like Perth where they had massacres and um, down in Pinjara. We didn't have that problem here. So we had a very friendly person that worked in the colonists so much so that he became good friends with the, the um, surgeon, the chief surgeon from here, and they became great friends to the extent of when they died, they were buried together on site down here. And uh, the city of Albany in 1997 took the time to uh, recognise the Noongar people in this area, and in particular Makari, so a great gesture on behalf of the city, I'm sure. And it's something we would expect anyway and we're hoping we'll have a lot more recognition of our, our presence here and our ownership of this land. And that's represented through this man here. Clarence is really um, a very, very important place to, to all of us, um, or Contra Up as we call it. Um, from the top of Mount Clarence, of course, you've got a 360 degree um, view so that, you know, the people, they could tell where people were. Um, and so it became a very, very important um, lookout. The, the old Noongars used to call this area here, Mamankort. 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 Yeah, Mamankort. Yeah. Um, Mamang is, is our word for whale, and court is your heart. So this mm. is Mamankort, which is? Heart of the whale. Heart of the whale. Well mm. done. Yes, mm. it is. This is where all, all the, um, the mothers would bring all their calves in, and it was a good place. It was like a big nursery ground for them through here. Yeah, and it's very sheltered as well. Mm. and. It's like, you know, it's a whole panorama. It's a whole, it's not one of the islands. Um, the islands belong to a much, much larger landscape. And, and it's that area, that landscape, that's really important to our people. Mm -hmm. yep. So this era up place, it's lookout place. And if we look all around us, you, know, you, can, you can see the Stirling Ranges. Um, so the Noangra mob, the other side of the Stirling Ranges, on a good day, you could maybe see their smoke, you know, sig mm. signalling to maybe they wanted to come in for to catch up for meeting or something like that. And over here you can see Oyster Harbour, which is known as Maya Rich. Uh, you've got a little island there called Green Island, and we call it uh, Wattery. Wattery is uh, like a pigeon, 
there are many different stories about how it was formed and um, the Marajit snake. The two of them got, got into an argument one day over some food and they, they started fighting each other and as they arrived to the round, uh, moving and so on, uh, they were kicking up, you know, digging. The digging and pushing up the sand and making the hills. And there's two rivers that come out of those, uh, that feed into the, into the, um, the harbour. One is the Kelgan and the other one is the King River, which is uh, Warikulyup. That river was formed from one of the Marjit snakes. It was so badly hurt after all the fighting that it went up that, that way. As it, as it was trying to get away, it was gouging out the sand and the earth and the water was following behind it. And as it got right up to the very end, it couldn't go any further and it bled out. Uh, and all its blood stained all the ground there. And that's where we find our red ochre, our midar. And this was the last place where the Anzac left from Australia to go to the wars in the First World War. It's been swallowed up to a large extent by that. There's a huge building up there now, the, uh, the um, Anzac Centre, which has worldwide prominence. So we've lost a fair bit of our impact there. And if we had traditional places up there, um, they were all swallowed up by somebody else's cause. And we still struggle with the RSL down here now in getting our flag to fly on the day. The first English settlers came um, and they got off their little boat, you know, down in the middle of the harbour. And they looked up at these two mounts because they're the first things you see, obviously, you know. And then later on, when they actually spoke to the local Minang people, they said, what, what do you call this place when they got to understand their language? It was probably a lot of indication pointing to um, the mountain and, and saying what, you know, what. And uh, they were told it was called um, Contarup because um, at the very, very top of the, the mountain were lots of corns or native huts. So it became known as Contarup. Um, Cornt, native hut up, that's the place of. So what we have here is a quaint. It's a traditional Noongar Menang shelter. The only thing that's missing is the um, kangaroo skin cloak as our door. Once that was on, we'd seal it up. And in the middle of summer, you could sit inside of it and it's nice and cool. It blocks out all the sound. It's really well insulated. And then in the winter, it's, a, it's the opposite. It's nice and warm, very cozy. You notice that all the leaves are facing downwards? Yeah. Now, why do you reckon we've done that? Can anyone guess? Keep the, water, yeah. keep the rain out, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. When it rained, it just ran straight off it. It yeah. fed the leaves up. My parents had a, a great deal more cultural knowledge and understanding and respect than I do, all my, all my children. So it was, a, it was a period in time where you were captured in language and in culture, totally captured in it. You didn't go outside of it. Everything you touched, everything you did was Code and culture. Well, going back to the 50s, I suppose, uh, you know, everybody was speaking fluently, the old elders. From then on, you know, we were losing them at a very rapid rate. And of course, the language and the culture has gone with them. And now in Albany, I don't know anybody who speaks the language fluently now. I've got this picture of, of Bluff Knoll, Bula Mila. I've got this picture, and I've got a little quote that says, To Aboriginal people, ill health is not just a physical disease. It is a manifestation of a spiritual and emotional alienation from land, family and culture. And I, and I think that's really a, a, a really important little um, message to what it's meant for us to lose our, our land and a lot of our culture. And so, uh, yeah, let's build it. So let's build it. Came to ensure they survive, we must all realize the special part our languages play. Our connection to the community with music started through an, a year eight NAIDOC assembly performance. And it was just 
it was a realization for us that this is what we want to do. Also coming on the journey with us is the Tidswell twins. I think they're from Queensland, so for them, Murray people. Whilst they're not from this area, they do have a real keenness to learn the Noongar language. While Cheyenne and I have been in Albany, we've come to learn a lot about the Noongar culture, but I feel we there's a lot more to be learnt still, like um, with language. Cheyenne and I would love to be able to sing songs in Noongar language. And I, I think it's just such a wonderful um, story about part of uh, our dream time that, that, that I live with. I live with this and this is my uh, part of my story about the Kawas. Nyit Kawa, Balvin Mat, Kura Kura, Kunda Mat, Mat Balkul, Wokat Pula, Meal Kawa, Wan Nija Mat, The Trail of the Little Green Parrot, long ago by the dream time, there was a trail through the Stirling Ranges. The trail was... Arnie Avril, she has a lot of knowledge in Noongar culture and language. Being able to sit down with a Noongar elder, there's that one-on-one -on -one connection. You can ask questions directly, get answers straight away. And uh, I would like to challenge you girls to um, sit down and see if you can um, get a little little song happening through uh, through this little book, and uh, I think it'd be great because you know the birds sing, the birds sing, mm -hmm. and so if you sang a little song about uh, about a dream time story, but you need to make it into something that's really um, brings our dream time alive. I'm, I'm glad. We, I feel privileged that me and Cheyenne get to be the ones who turn this story into a song. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited now. And, and nothing's happened yet, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's great. That's great idea. our home country and um, this is Noongar land. This is our, our great spiritual um, belonging and, and we welcome you. We welcome people because we are one. We are one. So we, uh, wherever you come from mm. you still, you still belong to us as a people. So. Standing in the front of us is a hill that's connected to this Dreamtime story. Mm. When you look in it, where mm. there's no growth on the hill, that's where the, the skin of the birds and their blood was dropped there going up that hill because they, they were gentle fly, gently flying along and then they heard a whistle above them. And the biggest danger for them was the, was the West Star Eagle, the Wileach. Mm. And they heard a whistle, and when they uh, when they looked up, the wild edge was on top of them, and so they they scattered, they split up, but some of them were going so low that they went straight into that hill. All the the flats in between the, in between the hills, that was made by the birds. That's the path of the birds. So special. Special place, special heritage, um, special stories. So girls, you know, I want you to feel it. I want you to feel, I want you to feel the specialness of it. 
I want you to feel the sacredness of it. I want you to feel it so you can put it into song. And you have mm -hmm. both have beautiful singing voices, and I know I'm excited about it, and I hope you are. When you take away the traditional names and put Western names over it or on top of it, it's like you don't want to tell the story, you want to change it. Changing the name affects the history, the songs, the stories, the, the dreams that come from that significant place. If I feel like this, then I can't imagine how someone who grew up in these Noongar places, how they would feel. The traditional name for Noongar is Noongar. Uh, I understand it's it's, it's a, a place of the Mali fowl. The Ngao, the Ngao is a Mali fowl. It's my place of birth, and I spent many happy years there. Robbie Minotaur from Noangrup is a, a, a great leader. He's a wealth of information, a fit young man of body, mind and spirit. He will coordinate a camp. And my understanding is kids from Katanning as well as Noangrup from Albany. So there will be quite a few kids there camping in Noangrup and Robbie will coordinate all of that. Right, well this one here was, was connected to the word Noangrup. So there's an angry Malifowl that used to that used to live here. We've got a belief that the, you know, the rainbow serpent came down, made his way down the natural waterways. He, he smelt the eggs underneath this cheeky Malifowl. And he went to you know, went to make contact. She pecked him straight on the straight on the mui, straight on the nose. So he went away and he went back down, thinking about ways of trying to come back to collect his eggs. So what happened was he came up and that soak there, he dived straight down underneath. Okay, as he came up underneath the Malifowl's nest, he sucked all the eggs out from underneath her. The Malifowl thought there was nothing wrong and stayed there for, you know, for months and months, but felt the nest starting to become cold and realised there was no eggs under her. Okay, so she cried herself to death sitting on his nest. Now what's the sign of the, what's the symbol of the tears? The water, the stream, running down into the natural waterways. And the Noongar people of the area has been working in with the, with the wider community to try and get something put up here, like a storyboard, to capture, capture the significance of this place. Um, it is a very heavily populated place. A lot of our people live there, I can recall, large Aboriginal reserves, land that was set aside for Aboriginal people to camp on. You could put up a tent, you could build a, a little shelter, bush shelter, canvas, they built whatever shelters they could. They weren't allowed to go into town after six o'clock. And when they used to go into town, they couldn't go into a shop where a white person was. They had to sit outside and wait until the shop was empty before they could go in. Going on to six o'clock, the police would come on to them. And they, well, they would follow them out and, and that was their opportunity to, to bash them. This is my history. This is what you need to know. And if I'm going to tell my history, I need to tell it because we, we go with two histories. We go with the settlement history and we go with our own, own history. The missionaries did a lot of good things in their time, but they've also done some bad things, such as not allowing us to practice culture, the corroboree, and, and never encourage them to continue speaking their language. Dragons, all that stuff are devils, devil teachings. Aboriginal people, right, were affected of these the, the model of oppression. So the first thing they took away, right, when we when 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 we were colonised, was our language, right. Without our language, we had our identity taken. We were given names from farmers that took our Nunga names away and gave us their names. So the model was in place. And we're st and we have t today. I'm not making excuses for you know for communities. We have other issues in place, such as like I said before, domestic violence, all those drugs out there that still have an impact. It's got nothing to do with what happened before, but it's a generational shift, the generational change. It's unfortunate that we have kids today that's affected by the stolen generation. Getting them that message out to um, the wider community um, has really 
I think, heightened people's sensitivities to why we are the way we are. It's not because we made us the way we are. It was, you know, the systems and, and those rules and regulations that were put in place that changed the whole history of, you know, a huge group of people. If you lose your language and your culture, you'll lose your identity and we become like everyone else. And we're not like everyone else. We're a 60,000 year old culture. You know, we're, um, we're not visitors, we're owners of this country, cultural and linguistic owners of this country. I think I know the future in this conversation will be one that we can, um, we can embrace. I feel very safe and sure about it anyway, that we're, we're going to add more to it than we're going to lose. We've lost enough, we've lost quite a bit of our language, our culture, but the losing stops and the learning starts. Warlich, we say. Warlich. Warlich. Say it with so much aggression, like. Yeah, well, he's an aggressive bird. Yeah, yep. Do you hear what I say? Warlich. 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 Yeah? Mm hmm. Okay. Barlap your ginning. Warlich. Barlap in. Almost there, that harmony. Yeah. Almost. I don't know. What, oh. Yeah, a lot of practice, a lot of practice. Coralini. Yeah, there's so many different ways. Barlap your ajanang, walich barlapini. When you're young, you don't realise the importance of, of um, finding out this history. You don't realise the importance of sitting down and listening to what is the most important thing in your life, you know? I'd, I'd love to see everybody learn the language. Um, it's, it's, we have a right to uh, be able to speak our own language. Look, I'm nearly, I'm nearly 80 years of age and, and, uh, and I can't speak it fluently. Uh, that's, that's wrong. I feel like bringing back traditional place names could be like a healing process maybe to not dwell on the past but think about what the future could be it's like it's kind of like closing the gap there's lots in the the conversation we've had and the journey we had that may stimulate young people to say that's something i would like to follow and that i like to do because a lot of people go to the movies and see Superman, so I'd like to be Superman. Young kids run around with big red on the S on their on the T-shirts. I don't think this journey is any different. And if it stimulates the young people and gets them interested in it, it's achieved more than I've expected to. And so I'm I'm, I'm quite enthusiastic about the the future that the kids will and young people will pick it up and carry it. Uh, we need that small fire but it'll end up becoming a bushfire of culture and cultural learning so that's the intention and that's what we've achieved. It's great to pop it loud.